the end of all, I am, and the end of all, O I am, artist Sarah Hannaford and her mother Shirley Andrews, Premier, the Honourable Stephen Marshall, MP, the Honourable Hugh Van Lay, AC, and Mrs. Langley, Minister Josh Teague, MP, Vice Chancellor Peter Hoy, AC, Professor Mandy Thomas, Deputy Vice Chancellor Jenny Shaw, St Mark's Board Chair, Ms. Linda Matthews and Mr. Ray Matcham, and other board members, honorary fellows, distinguished guests, old collegians and friends of the college, students and staff of St Mark's. Friends all, what a delight it is to welcome you to this unveiling of Sir Hannaford's superb portrait of our dear friends, Ian and Pamela Hall. It would be hard to imagine assembling such distinguished company at such short notice here at St Mark's other than to honour and to say heartfelt thanks to Ian and Pamela Hall. Thank you so much for coming. This morning I'll say something about Ian and Pammy and their profound connection to St Mark's and about the artist Sarah Hannaford before Ian and Pammy will say a few words and unveil the portrait. And then I'll call upon Sarah Hannaford to speak about the painting of the portrait before we all enjoy a celebratory morning tea outside around the pond. In the history of this college, no one has been more generous to St Mark's, nor made a greater contribution to facilities and support for our students than Ian and Pamela Wall. Theirs is a uniquely special place in the current life and in the history of this college, just as theirs is a very special place in the South Australian community, to which they've contributed so much both through the development of a remarkable and innovative international business based in Adelaide and through their extraordinary and unassuming generosity to so many good causes. In 2007, PAMI was recognised in the Order of Australia for, I quote, service to the community through a range of disability support, veterans welfare and charitable organisations. In 2008, Ian was honoured for service to business, particularly through the design and manufacture of electronic communication equipment and to the community through philanthropic activities. In 2019, he was further honoured for significant service to the community through philanthropic initiatives. These awards arose in part from Ian and Pammy's remarkable generosity to this college, for which we are deeply grateful. This portrait by Sarah Hannaford is one way in which we at St Mark's say thank you. The portrait will hang in a place of honour on the wall behind the high table, next to Gavin Walkley and near former masters Rose Orwin and John Bannon. Those portraits are all by Robert Hannaford, now to be joined here in Hannaford Corner by this portrait by Sarah Hannaford. When you get a chance to see the portrait, you'll notice, amongst other details which Sarah has captured so skillfully, that Ian is proudly wearing his St Mark's College tie, as he is today. In his speech on his election as an honorary fellow of St Mark's in 2008, Ian described himself as the only child of parents of modest means, his father was a master butcher in suburban Adelaide, who wanted the best opportunity in life for their son. Growing up, Ian had always been, as he once put it, interested in how things worked, electrical things, about dismantling them and putting them together again. And so by the age of 13 or 14, he was set on becoming an engineer. Ian was a student of public grammar, did intermediate physics and chemistry at the School of Mines and Industries, and then completed his secondary education at St Peter's College. His application form for entry to St Mark's in 1950 says that he participated at Saints in the Science Society, of which he was secretary 
1949 and in the Automotive Society. You might soon begin to recognise some recurring themes. The end came to residence as an undergraduate student at St Mark's in 1950. And as he later said, my life was really centred around St Mark's for nearly five years. As members of this college know, the college's annual magazine recording college life is known as The Lion. A somewhat flowery editorial note in The Lion of Ian's first year described The Lion as enabling the League Collegians, and I quote, to watch ourselves in retrospect, a company of young men marching slowly to meet the life that lies ahead. Certainly, the references to Ian in the line each year enable us to see the young man moving quite rapidly, I think, to make the life that lay ahead. In each of the years that Ian was a resident student at St Mark's, the line records aspects of his life here. His progress through his degree in electrical engineering at the University of Adelaide, including his being re recommended for the Electricity Trust Prize in 1954. His participation in the university's quadrant. His service for three consecutive years on the College Club Committee, including in 1954 as Treasurer. His role in the student escapade in the Adelaide Hills, known as Alpine Day, including in one year his making a lightning detour home to collect a large quantity of chops and steaks to rescue the Alpiners from the grim prospect of spaghetti and saveloids. <laughs> His being thanked for handling the backstage and technical arrangements for the College Review, and there is more. Along the way, Ian had become a well-regarded college identity with the affectionate nickname Prof. In many of the references to him in the line, he is simply referred to as Prof. The Lion, both in 1951 and 1952, had a column called Table Talk, which purported to record conversations over a college meal. In the 1952 Table Talk spoof conversation, Prof Wall declares what he calls some strictly high-frequency stuff. He says, if it's feedbacks, camshafts, differentials, piston rings or distributors you're inquiring about, just come to old Prof Wall. Yeah, that's me. With mechanics, I'm dynamite. <laughs> well, never a truer word spoken. Later in this spoof scene, Prof Wall, quote, leaps from the dining hall into a high-powered sports car and within a split second, the only trace is a line of recumbent pedestrians reaching to infinity. <laughs> In his report for the 1954 line, the president of the college club, Michael Hobbs, expressed thanks to members of the club committee in which Ian was treasurer for the efficient manner in which they performed their various tasks. The club president wrote, I would like to pay particular tribute to Prof who moved as facilely within the complexities of the treasurership as he does within those of a 10-valve high-frequency amplifier. <laughs> Is it any surprise that within five years, Ian and his co-founders were to create what became Codan, the hugely and globally successful electronics company? The club president's report in the line of 1954 also recorded, quote, it was with regret that we received Prof's resignation from the college club at the end of the second term. Well, the reason is not hard to find, because the same edition of the Lion recorded the happy news of the marriage later in the year of Prof War to Pam Hogan. This year, Ian and Pammy celebrated their 67th wedding anniversary. Pammy had been a student at what is now St Peter's Woodlands Grammar School. And when Ian first met her, she was working at the National Bank as a ledger keeper before starting nursing at the Women's and Children's Hospital. 
Ian and Pammy's has been a brilliant partnership. Ian has spoken of Pammy supporting him in every endeavour throughout their married life. So much of what they have done, including their philanthropy, has been done together as a team. It is for this reason that the college's library is called the Ian and Pamela Wall Academic Centre. They are joint governors of the College Foundation. And it is very fitting that this should be a joint portrait of Ian and Pammy. Just as Robert Hanford's very different portrait at Carrick Hill, where Pammy is so involved, is a joint portrait of Ian and her. In an oral history interview for the college in 2013, Ian spoke of his years in college, how college life developed his social skills, with the learning curve of the only child interacting more than ever before with other young people, and the development of his somewhat extensive social life. I can't help reflecting the more things change, the more they stay the same. He recalled the lively discussions with a broad mix of fellow collegians, including in those days many Western Australian medical students and Colombo grad students from Asian countries. Other student activities. He recalled the wise counsel and guidance of the master, Archie Price, and the vice master, Bob Lewis. The tutorial system, including the tutorial support in mathematics of Dr. Mary Harden, principal of St Anne's. The pastoral care the interest in guest speakers, what Ian called the total experience. Ian said that his years at St Mark's gave him, I quote, good preparation for the things that I needed to do in my adult life, and that without St Mark's he would not have had the success that he has had. Ian also said that his parents had a great belief in the university college concept of education and so it made it possible for him to attend St Mark's. Could there be a better vindication of the university college concept of education, or of parents creating <coughs> educational opportunities for their child? One particularly important conversation in Ian's time at college was with his college friend, Dick Brown, who was studying mechanical engineering while Ian was studying electrical engineering. As Ian recounts it, one day Dick Brown said to him, Ian, I think you ought to have a yarn with Alistair Wood. Ian replied, yes Dick, why would I want to do that? To which Dick Brown replied, I think you've got a lot in common. Perhaps somewhat sceptically, Ian did have a yarn with Alistair Wood and did find a lot in common. Together as undergraduates, they went on to make scientific equipment for the physics, chemistry and mechanical engineering departments. The friendship formed at that stage led Ian, Alistair and a third friend, Jim Bettison, together in 1959 to start the company that became Kodan. One of Kodan's two principal design engineers in its early decades, engineers in its early decades, Ian retired from its board in 2009 after 50 years' service as an innovative engineer and a clear-minded businessman. It has been authoritatively said that Ian and his co-founder, Alistair Wood, demonstrated exceptional engineering skill by personally developing the exceptional high-frequency radio technology and products that were the cornerstone of the success of the Kodan business and which over decades have provided such important assistance to many people worldwide. As well as in remote Australia, Kodan's products are used worldwide by most UN, NGO and other humanitarian and aid agencies, and by government and many private organisations. And Kodan has received a number of awards for export achievement, innovation and manufacturing. On his election as a fellow of the college in 2008, Ian said, when I look back, I see that I owe much of my success to my years in residence at St Mark's and the wise counsel of Archie Price and Bob Lewis, just as students in later times have received from the college and the several masters who followed on. 
I firmly believe that the future of our children, grandchildren, and indeed society itself will depend <coughs> on the leadership of well-educated citizens. That is why I am a strong supporter of St Mark's and other institutions of learning." Unquote. Ingham has also spoken of his feeling, I quote, almost a duty that you should reinforce the opportunity for those who are to follow in your steps. It is no secret that Ian and Pammy's support has been indispensable to the completion of the flats in the northwest corner of the college, one block of which is known in gratitude to Ian and Pammy as War. The East Wing, which includes the gym, the Ian and Pamela Wall Academic Centre, and two levels of excellent student accommodation. And behind it, the secure multi-storey car park, including last year the addition of new levels to the car park, taking our car parking capacity to a remarkable 160 places. A great amenity for our students, providing safe parking off the street. We could not be more grateful for this and for Ian and Pammy's support in so many other ways over the years, to the library, the gym, computer connections, the gas truck, the downer house lift, and scholarships, which are a central focus for the college today, creating and reinforcing opportunity for those who may follow in our steps. On the wall behind me are portraits of people of outstanding significance, in the life of this college, to whom we owe so much. At the beginning of Ian's first year in the college, Sir Henry Newland, long-term chair of the College Council, unveiled the portrait, the middle on the bottom row, the portrait by Sir Ivor Heal of the founding master, Sir Archibald Grenfell Price, marking his, 25 years, his first 25 years as master. In Ian's final year at St Mark's, Sir Ivor Heal's portrait of Sir Henry Ewan, the one on the far side over there, was unveiled. Since then have come two portraits by Sir William Dargy and those by Robert Hannaford and by other significant artists such as Barbara Beasley in Southgate. Soon, Sir Hannaford's splendid portrait of Ian and Pammy Wall will be on this wall where it most fittingly belongs. Sarah Hannaford is twice a graduate of the University of Adelaide in psychology and in art history, and has studied, studied painting, and specifically portrait painting in Adelaide, New York, and France. Her works have won many awards, and she has been a finalist for the Archibald Prize in the last seven consecutive years, including being highly commended last year. If you don't already, I think that when you see her portrait of Ian and Pammy, you will understand why. And now, it is my great pleasure to call on Ian and Pammy Wall first to say a few words and then to unveil Sarah Hannaford's portrait of them. Can I go first? Please. <laughs> Welcome to you all. It is such a special day for us. We thank our Premier, the Honourable Stephen Marshall, Professor John Markwell, Head of College and guests. We are here today to attend the unveiling of our portrait. It has been a great honour to have sat for Siri Hanford for four weeks and a wonderful experience. I am, and I have, can't read my own writing, <laughs> printing. Uh, Ian and I have both been involved with the college over many years, and we feel honoured to be here today. Please enjoy this special occasion. Thank you.
Für das ist mir nicht. As a youth, my father was apprenticed as an electrician to Spicer of Dignall. His father was a butcher, but when he suffered and drowned, my father was told he had to leave his work and assist the father. In this way, my father became a butcher. When I was about 10 years old, I disappointed my father in not following him in the shop, but said I wanted to be an engineer. When my father realised I was serious, both my parents did everything they could to support my wish to be an engineer. When I was old enough to go to university, my parents arranged for me to have an engineering course at St Mark's as a full-time living student. I enjoyed my time at St Mark's and benefited from the experience. Over the years, I've been able to return some of St Mark's benefits. Today, I'm honoured to have Sarah Anderson to paint my portrait together with Kevin, and after today, our portrait will continue our long-time association. It's nice. Please enjoy the arrangement which Professor John Michael, Head of College, has organised for us all. Thank you. If I may quote the Premier, that looks fabulous. <laughs> and I think your applause says it all. Many congratulations to Ian and Pamela, and thank you for what you said. And many congratulations to Sarah Hannaford, whom I am now delighted to call upon to speak about painting this portrait. We walked through the grounds of St Mark's and I was told the history of the school through the faces represented in the paintings. Traditional portraiture, especially works painted from life, really get to the essence of a person. And these walls are alive with the character and stories of those who have made important contributions to the college through the decades. A tradition of portraiture is a very special one because it not only tells the story of the people who make up the rich history of St. Mark's, but a parallel story of the working artists who are commissioned to paint the pieces. To grace the walls alongside the likes of Sir William Darby, my father, Robert Hanford, and his mentor, Sir Ivor Hill, is a big honour for me. The process of painting a portrait from life can be demanding. Many hours are required to capture subtleties in light, expression, and mood. Ian and Pammy were fantastic sitters and gave me as many sittings as required to complete this piece, for which I'm very grateful. 
First, we began with a meeting at St Mark's. Seeing Ian and Pammy seated side by side as we first spoke struck me as so natural, and I knew I'd like to represent them in this way in their portrait. Our first sitting in the studio consisted of finding the right composition, lighting, and the choice of chair. From this point, Ian and Pammy came back a number of times over the course of the month, and in between, very kindly loaned me their outfits so that I could continue painting each detail from life. It's my method to set up articles of clothing on a napkin in between sittings, which cuts down on the time needed and uh, without compromising on the detail. Over time, the portrait came together and I've had the privilege of getting to know Ian and Pally, um, learning about the beginnings of Kodan in Norwood, the incredible growth of the company to what it is today, their lives, travels, passions, and great generosity. Ian and Pammy care deeply for their community and give so much of their time to help others, and this portrait was no exception. With this work, I hope I've captured something of their essence, and in the years to come, may those in the St Mark's community feel the depth of their kindness and character whilst continuing to appreciate the wonderful contribution to the college. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your fascinating words and warmest congratulations again. We very much look forward to seeing your portrait of Ian and Pamela, of Pammy on the wall behind me. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal proceedings. Thank you again for being here. Thank you to my colleagues and our students who have made this event possible, most particularly Carol Atkinson, who has coordinated the event, and to everyone who has contributed. And now, please, after admiring the portrait, please join us around the pond for a further celebration. I think the champagne is just about to be poured. Thank you very much.